Now we're recording. Oh, crap. Now it's official. Okay. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to start off with talking about the first foundation. And the link between the talk today is how does immunity affected by the foundations of health, specifically detoxification and cleansing and purification. But we have to go through all four foundations to provide context for why we're going to talk about the, the foundations three and four, which are detoxification and drainage. So to start with, let's go to what are the four foundations? So foundation one is really your chooser. So what are your ratios of protein, carbohydrate, and fat? What are your ratios of protein, carbohydrate, and fat you eat day in and day out? How much raw and how much cooked? What's your ratio there? How much fibrous to non-fibrous foods and what type of fibers are you eating? That's part of the first foundation, all those things. And they're all contextualized. I studied yin and yang through Chinese medicine 25, 30 years ago up to the present day. One of my teachers says yin and yang don't mean anything. In and of themselves, they mean nothing. You can put alpha, beta, any two words of duality will, will do quite well. We live in a world of duality. Hot and cold, wet and dry, light and dark, blah, blah, blah. So everything has context then. Something can be more yin than another or more yang than another, but yin and yang in of themselves mean nothing. So it's clarified like you're shorter than me. There's yin and yang, right? I'm taller than you. But it's based on relationship. So my health practice changed a lot in the 90s because of this way of thinking. You know, more relational thinking versus isolated function thinking. So that's how I came up with where I am now, 25 years later. So the first foundation involves your blood sugar. Because insulin is a primary hormone. Most other hormones are secondary hormones to insulin. And again, see, questions are going to be coming up. Very compelling stuff. So insulin being a primary hormone means you can determine your own insulin levels by what you choose. How much protein, how much carbohydrate, and how much fat are you choosing to eat day in and day out? We have been, and I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be soft about this, we have been brainwashed and into believing that we need all these carbohydrates in a low-fat diet. That doesn't work and almost never did work, unless you live in the tropics. And then you're not eating the refined carbohydrates you're eating in America, you're eating fruit. Because who wants to have a big bowl of hot brown rice and it's 95 degrees in Ecuador and 90% humidity? It's insane, right? You'd be wanting watermelon and fruit and watery things in your body, right? So most Americans are running chronically too much insulin, chronically elevated blood sugar, and that leads to a degenerative spiral. And so the first health foundation, the reason why this is the first is because if you don't have your blood sugar set, nothing's gonna work. Including you determine by your own choices, your energy, your hormone levels, and your mood by what you put in your mouth <coughs> to a very large degree. So I was overcarbed. I admit it, the first 35, 40 years of my life, overcarbed. And what that led to for me was bipolar blood sugar, which led to a bipolar mood, which led to a lot of other bipolar things in my life. Um, I had hypoglycemia. So the difference between a hypoglycemic and a type 2 diabetic is that hypoglycemic, their insulin works too well. And a type 2 diabetic, their insulin isn't working at all anymore. And you have to make more and more and more of it for the same job that one insulin unit could do when you're hypoglycemic, you'll need 10. And there's ways to check for that very inexpensively with the hair mineral analysis. The calcium-magnesium ratio tells you how bad your insulin resistance is because your calcium levels will start to elevate. And you might ask yourself, why would your calcium levels elevate? And there's a saying I learned from another teacher as a clinical pearl. Long-term inflammation leads to degeneration. And part of the degenerative process is calcification. So that's what happens in your arteries. The artery lining, for whatever reason, your blood's too toxic. It starts to cause inflammation in the intima or the entire part of the artery. And then the body's attempt to patch that is with cholesterol, because cholesterol is sort of waxy and it's flexible. You give somebody the statins, and the statins cause calcification because it's cut off the cholesterol pathway. So what you end up with is vice calcification in someone's eyes. So that's part of what we're doing. One person tonight will be doing an assessment with the iris, 
and the tongue and the sclera. And so I can see very quickly where someone is in their degenerative pathway, you know, where they are in their life. That's why I tell my clients, it's kind of hard to hide from someone like me. It's like I couldn't 25 years ago, this Chinese medical doctor looked at me for five minutes and he summed up my whole life in, in only five minutes. I was very impressed. Looked at my face, my tongue, talked for five minutes. He goes, blah, 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 this is what you got going on. I was like, I want to do that. Oh, that's awesome. Here we are 25 years later. I'm not as good as he was, but still pretty good. Um, so your blood sugar is important because if it's chronically elevated, then you're running chronically elevated insulin. And, and what is insulin? It's a storage hormone. You gain fat. So I got people, that, I had one woman, she had back fat. And she was a Bikram person. I, I hate this back fat. But it was all kind of around here. And I go, oh, that's insulin. So her insulin was broken. You know, there's not much more I could do besides just get her off of some of the refined food she was on. And she did pretty well. So as it says over here that you can't see on the, uh, the screenshot just yet, but I'll give you a shot of the whiteboard in a minute. Part of the foundation one is your oxidation, how you're oxidizing food into energy, and your life force. So the other part of foundation one, besides these ratios, is your chooser. The psychology of how and why you're choosing what you choose. This is 90% of it right here is the chooser. I spent a lot of time with people chooser. You know. <laughs> you know. I spent a lot of time with the chooser. My chooser, I knew I needed to be off wheat for eight years. That's how addicted I was. Worse than an alcoholic. I and mean, it was ruining my life. But man, I loved it. The last two holdouts was nature's, nature's path, hemp plus canola, and the homemade Toll House chocolate cookie recipe with healthy ingredients. Those are my last two holdouts. It's like eight of those cookies, you know, hot out of the oven. <laughs> you know, it's, oh, so good. With cooked nuts, you know, the worst for your liver. Chocolate and cooked nuts before bed, you know, like, oh, talk about, just kill your liver. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the chooser then is us getting behind. I mean, I tell clients if they only have a certain budget and they're addicted to sugar, go see a psychologist or use me as counseling because you got to get into that. Why am I in a bad habit pattern that's ruining my life? One therapist has a note. The difference between a habit and an addiction is a habit is not ruining your life. An addiction is. And I love that because... You could have a food habit, but it's not ruining your life, but you could have a food habit that's ruining your life, right? Mm -hmm. And mine was. I mean, I think I was, I, sh I should have died when I was 40, 41, 42. I just was that bad. And as I tell my clients, if you're not in enough pain, sometimes you won't change. And I had to reach rock bottom suicidal ideations, didn't want to be on the planet. And I had a couple things rescue me. So your chooser is important. And so, you know your first foundation works, as you guys can see on the screenshot. You feel restored after you eat. And you can adapt to any condition, environment, and know what to do in any season or situation for yourself. I know all that for myself. So on the Monopoly board, I know how to get home easily. If I got a cold, I know what to do. If I got a runny nose, I know what to do. If I'm in the tropics, I know what to eat. If I'm in Alaska, I know what to eat. I was up in Davis and Auburn a few days ago, 95 degrees. I didn't suffer one bit. So knew exactly what to do. You want to focus on bitters when it's hot, not sweet and juicy. You want bitters when it's hot because bitters is a cooling flavor. That's right. Coffee grows in the tropics. It's bitter. Plants grown in the summertime sun are more bitter than their wintertime counterpart. Eat summer lettuce versus winter lettuce. Eat summer kale versus winter kale. You'll see it for yourself. See, I'm not asking anyone to believe me with anything. Go I'm talking about stuff that's natural law. You can go find out for yourself. I don't want your beliefs. I'm going to go see like I did. So I've been following this Chinese circadian rhythm for 25 years, including each color in each season, each emotion in each season, each type of food in each season. And so it's spun for me. And my hay fever is now a thing of the past where I had 10 allergy shots in each arm from age five to age 18 every week. It ended up being like 18,000 shots. Did it help me one bit? No. But it made some asshole a hell of a lot of money. So I learned early on that the medical system's not here to be your friend. So we're here to empower you 
to make better choices. And how do you get behind this? This is where alchemy comes in and you have to pull your life apart like a jigsaw puzzle and start looking at the pieces. And so one of my processes is called the self inventory. And you set a random timer on your phone. There's one called randomity. And then when the timer goes off, you ask yourself, what was I doing right then? What was I thinking? What was I feeling? And I have a little spreadsheet for it. And then the final question was, was I conscious or not? So the next question might be, how do I know if I'm conscious or not? I know that I'm conscious when I'm operating from choice. I know I'm unconscious when I'm walking, operating from trigger and reaction and instinct. Response versus reaction is what you got. Response, awake, react, asleep. Very simple. So most of us are walking around mostly asleep in our day-to-day -day life. When I met um, a girlfriend, that she became my girlfriend because of this statement 12 years ago. I said, yeah, I'm about 90% awake in the world during the day. Capricorn. <laughs> she looked at me and said, barely half. <laughs> and she challenged me. I said, oh my God. And plus she liked Star Trek and John Luke Picard. So she was my girlfriend after that. <laughs> um, so that was really a good, you know, that's why we have people around us to challenge us to be better. I'm generally presumptuous and somewhat arrogant. So I need those people around me. Um, so this first foundation, you can see why I'm spending so much time on it. I'm thinking that they can see you better this way. Thank you. Hi. Okay. Thank you, Monica. I, yes, yeah, so I need people like Monica. Okay, so... Yeah. Remember, keep those questions in your on that chat box. I'll spend as much time as you need going over them. Um, See if you can do this. Either. Monica's yeah. even moving me a little further over here. Because you can you still go. point to that to us. Yeah. Yeah. Yay! Teamwork. Okay, yeah. we got teamwork here. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to move on now. That's sort of uh, foundation one, one hundred one. You know, the survey of it, and there's lots more to it, but. The only other thing I can show you is foundation two. I have a little uh, foundation two diagram. You guys could come around and look at it. This is not on a screen on the wall. And the second foundation is how you help yourself process food. So it's basically digest and assimilate. If you cannot break food down and turn it into food, I mean, turn it into energy and new tissue, and resources, then you're never going to be healthy. That's why it's the second foundation. You have to be able to break food down. So that involves your chewing, your stomach function, your stomach acid, your small intestinal absorption, your pancreas, your liver, your gallbladder, your bile, and your lymphatic system all have to work. That's right, your lymphatic system has to work for you to process fat. I don't care what anybody says. If your portal veins and your lymph isn't working, you're not going to process fat well. Um, so as you can see, improper food breakdown equals more waste. And when you have more waste in your gut, you have more waste in your brain, which means you're unclear decisions. See, so if your food breakdown isn't working, see, that's what happens when it's off. You get waste buildup. And then it burdens these two foundations, three and four. So the long and the short of it is then, if you want to fix this foundation, I have a little... Uh, blurb for that and that's right here you guys will how do i maximize digestion so we must break food down as component parts and i talk a little bit about the chosen ones the mineral elements of which we're all made of that's why my business is called health alchemy because alchemy is the root of everything so the chosen ones are carbon hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur, and nitrogen. Most of the universe is made up of these elements, including your body and the, the carbohydrate and the fat and the protein you eat is made up of only these elements. You know, there's other stuff in there, but in their purest form, that's what they're made of. So your body has to be able to access those Lego building blocks and make them into something else. And how do you do that? So at the bottom here, I have some easy ways to max out digestion. And the easiest one is eat 
when you're hungry only, chew your food, 30 to 50 chews per mouthful. Check your tongue in the morning. If it's not pink with a nice clear white fur, it's not healthy. Check your stool. If you have chunks of food in it, you're not breaking food down. <laughs> so apple cider vinegar, salt in your water, and Swedish bitters are the three easiest, cheapest ways to get better, more out of your digestion. Salt water drinks, apple cider vinegar, and bitters are the three easiest and cheapest. And then you can add in enzymes, HCL, pepsin, and other stuff that are a little more um, involved with money. But that's why I grow, always grow bitter herbs where I am, at least dandelion. What kind of salt? I only use Celtic salt, thanks for asking. Um, so the Celtic is a brand. Um, Selena Natural sells it online, S-E-L-I-N-A, Selena Natural. Selena's been around with the company for a long time. Um, I started using Celtic salt back in the early 90s when I learned about the, uh, oh God, what's that called? The Codex Alimentarius is the international conspiracy to poison us with bad salt. Most salts, they remove most of the trace elements and use them for industry and then sell us back the 99% sodium chloride. Bullshit. And that's an international codex. It, it states that all salts sold on international waters must be 98% sodium chloride or higher. That's right. And Celtic sea salt is 85% sodium chloride, 13% lower. It's a lot of trace minerals you're not getting, folks. The first highest salt in seawater is uh, sodium chloride. The next highest salt is magnesium chloride. So an easy way to get magnesium is from ocean water, purified. And that's what I sell for my ionic minerals is purified seawater, basically. Because it's pure. It's not refined at all. You're not taking magnesium and binding it to a ligand, you know, like lactic acid or citric acid, you know, magnesium citrate, like calm, you see. There's reasons not to do that either. When you take synthetic forms of magnesium, you're gonna affect your red blood cell metabolism, and you're gonna have lower energy the longer you do it. I have proof for that. So you only want certain forms of magnesium, glycinate, maybe lactate, definitely not citrate, chloride, and a few others, that's it. And you want it from seawater, you want it natural, if you can get it, completely natural. There's two tests you can do for self-test for digestion, um, and they're on this uh, portal here. One's the candida spit test, which is quite interesting. And the other one is a Zypan or a stomach acid loading test. You just keep taking more and more stomach acid every day until you get to a Bernie point, and you know how much you need. You do one day less than the Bernie day. It's really simple. And um, I'm not going to spend much more time on foundation two. We'll come back to that because I'm trying to get this done in a half hour. We're going to spend time with the detox quick part, which is part of that really connects with immunity more. Um, but I will say, um, I'm going to end the screen share for just a second so I can show the stomach. So your stomach right here, your digest, your foundation two has all these veins that go up to the liver. Liver's over here, gallbladder's here. And these veins, are called the hepatic portal veins. You don't hear about it a whole lot from any therapist at all. Hepatic portal veins. But those are your food filter. It's your filter of food. So when you're absorbing food through peristalsis, it goes into these blood vessels up and over to the liver to be processed before it goes into general circulation. And that's where atherosclerosis begins. If the tube should be this big, and it's only that big, then you end up with portal vein stagnation, I call it. And the side effect of that that no one really understands is your varicose veins, your hemorrhoids, and your pelvic problems are primarily hepatic portal vein problems. Back in the olden days, they would give people enemas for this, specifically coffee enemas and castor oil packs. But as Linda was saying earlier about a lot of the language we used to use has been ripped away from us and this newer uh, Orwellian stupidity has been inserted in its place. But the old therapist 100 years ago knew all this stuff. I mean, they used to call arthritis cooked food disease. 100 years ago, I can explain that quite easily. One third of your connective tissue is protein. Calcium gets way too much credit. Calcium is a poison as far as I'm concerned. It slows down your thyroid and constipates your bowels. Why the hell are you doing that to yourself? So what we have to, what we have to look at then is, um, what are the primary elements we need and separate all that out? I gotta move along a little bit, so I'm gonna try and not go down that digression. Spirit went, nope, move along. Um, so these portal veins are essential. 
And so if you have it this big, when it should be this big, then what you see is those guys where their gut goes out to here. You know those guys? That's portal vein stagnation because the fluid should be going up here, but instead it's sitting in the belly and making the belly go out like a balloon. Same thing with the hemorrhoids. It's pushing down, the balloon's getting bigger, pushing down on the pelvis, and there's pressure on the hemorrhoids. A lot of prostate conditions, same thing. There's a dog pile down here. It's a big dog pile right here. Everything up here is going and squishing it. It's called prolapse. I could deal with it. I got a prolapse right here. Anybody don't hear me right here. So I know very well for 20 years of managing this without surgery. You know, you know freaking autoimmune Gore-Tex. Um, so it's imperative to understand that when you have the freeway blocked up, the on-ramps to the freeway end up full. There's your varicose veins. It's not a vein issue, it's a belly issue, varicosities. And I don't know why in my journey of 25 years, I've run across maybe one therapist that talks about portal veins. In 25 years doing cancer work since 96, no one talks about it. Maybe Gershon, you know, some of the cancer people, Hoxie and the old therapist, but it's really unusual to me. No one talks about the lymphatic system or the portal veins. Two key centers, because the lymphatic system is where all your cell waste goes. We've got this toxic cells, talking about COVID, you know? Well, there's a lot of knowledge that we know that part of the whole viral thing is your pre-existing condition. So if you have toxic cells, you already have COVID, folks. You already have it in your virum if you're toxic. Think about when you sweat, you stink. When your cells sweat, they stink. And that stink is viral. You see? And we're blaming it on this other stuff. Like, you're going to get it. You don't get it. You've already got it. And it's not even as bad as you think. That's the good news. So you clean out and cleanse your body, and the cells start to clean out. And then you go into Herxheimer reactions, and you got to navigate all that dark cave of fungal metabolites and... We're gonna go into that right now. All right. Thanks for bearing with me, folks. We're gonna go back to the screen share. I see a chat question, good. All right, we're gonna go on to foundation three. There we go. So as you guys can see on the screenshot, detoxification, this is why I do seasonal cleanses. I've been leading group cleanses for about 15 years every season. And I usually participate at least a little bit because I understand what I'm dealing with. And what you see there is there's five forms of waste our system has to deal with to conceptually model it at least. So there's our normal metabolic waste day to day and day out. You know, the liver is like a guy standing behind the take a number counter with a job to do all day. And when the line gets too long for the liver to deal with, we call those symptoms. Very simple model to understand. So there's our normal metabolic waste that that guy's got to deal with all day, every day. And then there's microbial waste it's got to deal with. Hey folks, guess what? You're the captain of the bug ship. Your own cells are outnumbered a thousand to one by bugs in your body right now. And they're eating and they're pooping. Everything has to eat and everything has to poop. Hey, I'm the captain of Craig, the bug ship. Lots of poop in me, woo! <laughs> You see, so we don't think about this stuff, but you're the captain of the bug ship full of poop. That's why you want probiotics in there because good bacteria, good fungus, good yeast, good viruses. That's right. There's good viruses, folks. They poop out healthy stuff for you. The bad bugs poop out the inflammatory stuff. You know how you can check this? Eat a lot of chia seeds full of soluble fiber. If you feel rotten afterwards, you know your gut's off. Because eat a lot of soluble fiber, eat those prebiotics. If you feel rotten afterwards, you know what you need to know. You shouldn't have a bad reaction to prebiotics because you're feeding flora. So if you have bad flora and you throw food in there, the bad flora is gonna go, yippee, poop out all the poison. And you feed the good flora and they go, yippee, let's poop out B vitamins, immunoglobins, proteins. Oh, and by the way, one third of your stool is dead cells of your gut and dead bacteria and microbes. One fourth to one third of your stool. Yummy. That's why animals are always eating each other's stool because it's full of protein. Yeah. And immune factors. I mean, there was this dog at 
the kid eating this other dog's poop and it survived this journey where everyone else died. It was, um, it was amazing. It's not an argument to eat poop. So no, it's not an argument not to eat dog. poop. Especially not dog poop. Yeah. Laugh out loud. <laughs> you know, health can be fun. Make these serious subjects. Okay, microbial waste, you get that. Chemical waste, all time high. Without precedent, we have more chemical waste in our environment than debatably at ever in the future. And so that poor liver guy's going, God, I got all this metabolic waste, all this microbial waste. Now I got Roundup to deal with. And I got Raid in the house. And I got all these toxic ammonia-based cleaning agents and bleach and fluoride and oh my God, chemical waste. You get the point. Heavy metal waste. Got to deal with that all day, every day. Lots of heavy metals in our environment, thanks to your loving government that loves you so much, they're willing to poison you with all kinds of heavy metals and tell you it's otherwise. It's called fluoride in your water, folks. Okay, heavy metal waste, I'm not gonna go on that. And then radiation damaged tissue waste. Let that sink in. Radiation damaged tissue waste. Also without precedent. So if we're gonna talk about radiation, we need to talk about the two forms of radiation. There's ionizing radiation that you see from like a nuclear power plant that's very destructive, right? And then there's non-ionizing radiation. That's what's coming out of these devices and your refrigerator and your computers and your cell phones and your cell towers. And they're called radio frequencies. Some of them are called radio frequency emissions. And that's what they're a form of microwave, folks. So we have all these microwaves around us and we're getting our brains cooked 24-7. And it is damaging our cells. So what's the remedy? The remedy uh, at first is your macronutrients. If you're in a radiation rich environment with electrosmog, then these three macronutrients are the three that you want. And these were the three that were demonized in the 20th century. The man who found this out was on, um, he was subjecting the poor little rats to uh, gamma radiation and feeding them various things and seeing how they lived the longest. So this is based on Emmanuel Ravici's work. R-E-V-I-C-I, -E Emmanuel Ravici. This is based on his work. This is Michael McAvoy's uh, thing, Monica, also. I got this from McAvoy. So I looked at the Ravici's work, and it turns out that saturated fat, cholesterol, and protein-rich foods are your radiation remedy. Protein-rich, saturated fat-rich, and cholesterol-rich are your radiation remedy. So in today's environment, it's more dangerous to have low cholesterol than high. I'll be quite blunt about that. But you want your ratios good. Your LDL should not be more than twice your HDL. It's a good way to get a cheap lab work and figure that out. If your LDL is more than three times your HDL, you have inflammation. And LDL is not bad and HDL isn't good. Let's be clear about that. And when you hear a doctor calling it LDL cholesterol and HDL cholesterol, you call them out. LDL is not cholesterol, HDL is not cholesterol. LDL means low density lipoprotein. There's no word cholesterol written on there anywhere. HDL means high density lipoprotein. There's nothing good or bad about them. The low density lipoproteins leave your, litter, your liver like little carriers of packs and supplies for the rest of the body. And the HDLs are the ones coming back. Low density, high density. One goes out, one comes back. So if you're leaving with 140 you know, firemen on the fire truck and you're coming back with 70, you got some problems. It's not good and bad. It just means you got a lot of collateral damage in the peripheral tissues. See, my life is about actions. What's the vitamin C's action? What's LDL's action? What's the life process? I don't give a crap about a still shot of someone's chemistry. It doesn't mean anything to me. Just like a photograph of you is not you. A photograph of your blood at a moment in time on a date is not you. Don't let them pigeonhole you into that. It's a process. You need at least two or three different lab works to show you the trajectory. Is your blood sugar stable, going up or going down? You need at least two data points for that. It's vital to have this stuff checked in today's world because I have so many people that say, oh, I'm getting enough protein. I'm not overcarbing. My serum protein's okay. My cholesterol's not too low. And if you're getting, trying to get pregnant and your cholesterol is low and your protein's low and your red blood cells are low, you shouldn't be getting pregnant, for God's sakes. You know, you gotta have that serum protein, amino acid pull in your bloodstream. So, de the third foundation that I like to call it detox, decongest, transform. 
And if you can't do it, then your toxin and cells, um, you get toxic and your cells get dysfunctional. And you get stagnant. And in um, live blood cell analysis, they have something that um, really starts to, the cells get a little sticky. And if they get even stickier, they get something called rouleau, where they're on, they're like the dominoes on top of each other. And um, I really wish we had more of those people around. You know, like we'd get Dan to go do some more of it. And, you know, the dark field microscopy slash uh, live blood. Uh, it's really valuable because you can really see um, in a lot of ways your own blood right there, you know, on the microscope. Like, wow, I can't deny what I'm seeing there. I've got parasites all around the red blood cells, you know. I got something for you, I think. Monica just chimed in. Excellent. Um, so I'm going to go to the fourth health foundation because we're at 829. And, uh, ooh, what happened there? Is the elimination. Right. So part of what cleansing we choose to cleanse, I choose to cleanse, I'll do I statement, is I choose to cleanse because the one thing I can do is make choices to get the elimination of toxins out of my body. So I uh, got a brand new client. She barely has two bowel movements a week her whole life. She's 35 now and she's got skin problems. And my first thing to her is that you're auto intoxicated. Auto, A-U-T-O, you're tox intoxicated from the inside. Food transit time is 24 hours. From mouth to anus, that's been tracked over 100 years. You can't debate it. So healthy transit time is 24 hours. If food sits in there longer than that, then it's poisoning you. And if you're rotting from the inside out, your immune system will be triggered and you gotta deal with that rot. So don't blame the candida and the yeast because that's its job is to eat rot. So if you're overeating, stop blaming the bugs. They're just trying to do their job, which is cleaning up your mess. I had a teacher say that. So when you get salmonella, don't blame the bugs. Blame yourself for predisposing yourself to that baloney. See, in my life, we're trying to get rid of the victim. Empower us to make choices, and then we have to take responsibility. I stayed the victim for a long time because it allowed me to shirk responsibility. I could go blame something out there. Oh, those bugs. Oh, the president. Oh, the dirt. Oh, the airplane flying overhead. You know, whatever it is. It just, it was easier than owning it for myself, right? And each of us on our journey has a place where we're willing to stand in our power and say, this is where I draw the line. I'm taking responsibility now for myself. And I started doing that about 15 years ago. And, um, you know, there's, there's a tiny part of me that'd rather go back to eat, eating the pizza, you know, and be ignorant and, you know, have the 12 pack and the pizza and, you know, go surf all day. And, um, you know, small part of me kind of wishes I could go back a little bit, but I wasn't allowed to, so didn't. So how, where do we drain? So drainage channels. Well, poop is one, right? What's another one? You guys can. Sweat. Sweat, another one. Another one. Pee is another one, good. Poop, pee, sweat. What else? Tears. Tears and other secretions. There's one more big one. No, I mean, yeah. technically, <laughs> you women, yeah, women live longer than men and they're bleeding every month. So there's a good argument there. That's a secretion, so a pleasant secretions. Okay. <sighs> Breathing, there you go. Breathing. So I have a little simple model for this. Um, your lungs are your air filter, like your car, you know? Your lungs are your air filter. Your bladder, kidneys is your water filter. Your liver is your oil filter. Your liver and your lymphatic system is your oil filter. Your spleen is your food filter along with the portal veins. And then your skin um, and your lungs do most of your breathing of your acid base management, your skin and your lungs along with your kidneys. But it's really important. Uh, when you see, um, you know, I'm not going to get much into the assessment on this particular talk, but I'm going to be doing these throughout the week. Is um, if you look at this little foundations chart, um, there's a little these little rings that you see, the yellow rings. That's on the edge of someone, the colored part of their eye. And that's called the scurfrim, and that corresponds to the skin. There's a concentric ring on the outside. I have this beautiful blue right there. 
you know, the ladies love it. Oh, I love your blue bedroom eyes. And, well, it's actually kind of a negative, you know. So really shows out with the blue eyes and the brown eyes, you can still see it. And that Bernard Jensen used to call that skin anemia. You don't have good lymphatic circulation through your skin. And the remedy is dry skin brush. I hadn't dry skin brush in a year, but I, I broke it out for the cleanse. I started dry skin brushing every day. I felt so rotten the other morning. I dry skin brushed and I felt fantastic five minutes later. I'm telling you, just you know, get it all, get everywhere, brush your hair. And I'm like, why didn't I do, why did I stop doing this? And always do it the morning. Generally, yeah, generally. But don't be anal about it, for God's sakes, you know. Um, there's one lady, she's like, you know, do it in a perfect circle around the nipple and then this way here. And it's like, I'm not gonna remember these 15 instructions. Just get going, you know, <laughs> get it moving. Yeah, I'll laugh out loud. Okay, so those are your drainage channels and your lungs you can control. Your bowels a little bit, you know, if you eat more raw food, which let's go to foundation four. On the screen here. Oh, wrong one, sorry. God, I'm not an IT guy. Okay, here we go. Foundation four. So when your bowels aren't moving, oh, wrong one. God, this really is not helping me, my cause. There we go. So when someone comes in, I send them over to this, and um, you guys, I'll go through it with you guys verbally. So if you have slow bowels, I have about 15 questions I ask myself. And the first one is, are they hydrated? So part of cleansing, you know, is really, hey, drink more water. It'll cleanse more, <laughs> literally. The parameter is loosely half your body weight in ounces. So if I weigh 200 pounds, 100 ounces of water a day, loosely. You can determine by your urine. If your urine's perpetually clear, you're, not, you're drinking too much water. If your urine's perpetually darker than pale ale, you're not getting enough water. That's, it's going to change all day. So I know I'm overwatering when, you know, it's coming out clear all day. It's like, okay, I don't need to drink much water tonight. And it's coming out, you know, like, oh, oh it's like bright orange. <sighs> Get that water in. You know. So I look at a lot of different things and um, hydration is one of them. The next most important one that often gets missed is your bile. Bile is a laxative. So if you don't have a gallbladder, you need to be taking cow bile with every meal the rest of your life. It's not an option. Because you got the cake baster, which is the gallbladder going squirt. You get a bunch of bile squirting into your intestines. If you don't have that squirt and you have a little drip because you don't have the cake baster anymore because the doctor convinced you to get it out, which was a bad idea, and you can't absorb fat soluble vitamins either. A, D, E, F, K. That's right, there's a vitamin called vitamin F nobody talks about. It's part of the E complex. So, um, and it's a major component in skin cancer. It's missing and deficient in diets. It's part of cod liver oil, actually. It has vitamin A, D, and F. So bile, and you, you know how your, your stool, if it's slow, you know that there's bile deficiency because the stool will be light, light colored. The darker the stool, other things being equal, more bile. If you're eating a lot of kale and green leafies, all bets are off. Because your stool will be dark if you're eating a lot of greens, no matter what you do. But it's really, if you notice like, wow, I got constipated and then my bowel finally came out, but then it was really light, lighter than normal. That's what I'm talking about. It's like, oh, maybe my bile got kind of clogged up. Important distinction called acolic stool. A-C-H-O-L-I-C, acolic stool in the medical world. Uh, one fun thing you can look up at home or you guys can is the Bristol stool chart. You can go to Google Images. The Bristol, B-R-I-S-T-O-L, the Bristol stool chart. It's a medical. And there's fun versions for kids and whatnot, but you know, on one, on one extreme, it's complete liquid. On the other extreme, it's rabbit pellets. Or the stool is so hard and compacted, it's coming out in rabbit pellets, little black pellets. So that's one extreme to the other, and then everything in between. And generally, you want to be, oh, God, that's right. We got this one teacher 25 years ago. He would, we couldn't nail him down to what a perfect bowel movement was. But we finally got him cornered one day. He said, oh, man, all right. It's the, sh it's the diameter of your big toe. It's dark brown. And it's like a Titanic. It's neither sinking nor floating in the toilet. He said, that's a perfect turd. 
And I'm like, have you ever had one of those? I don't even know I ever had one of those. <laughs> wow. So um, you could also have it be a little softer and a little harder, but you know, you don't, they say if there's ridges in it too, that's good. And if it's just straight, that's not so good. If it's straight, you're kind of dehydrated or too many, too much flour products, you know, and you see it just kind of coming out like, like a cake baster, but there's no ridges in it. You know what I'm talking about? I'm a stool analysis guy. I'm looking at stool for 35 years, so it's just common. It probably freaks some people out. Eh, looking at your stool? Gross. Okay. Anything else? Of, oh, stomach acid deficiency is another one for slow bowels. And so back to how do you raise your stomach acid levels? So these are the little pearls that um, are really important for cleansing and it helps your immunity because if your digestion is off, you're going to be wrecking your immunity. And so your stomach acid, I'm gonna go back to that in a second and I'll prove to you how I know that. Stomach acid is dependent on your nervous system. Your body does not make stomach acid when you're in fight or flight. It will not by definition because you're in sympathetic nerve dominance and the blood's all going to the muscle so you can run from the saber tooth tiger. Your body is not concerned with digesting food when you're in fight or flight. It's a, that's a, it's a mechanism of human, human survival. And what are we doing all day? We're in fight or flight all day wondering why we can't digest. We have to be in parasympathetic. We, we have to eat sitting. I eat in my car, I'm horrible. I'll shave with one hand and eat with the other when I'm really in a hurry. It's awful hypocrisy. I don't do it all the time, but when I do, man, it's just, it's like, how are you, what are you doing? Saving time. Saving time. Time is money. So you can help your stomach acid by eating in a restful state. And if you're stressed out, for God's sakes, don't eat. Or eat liquid. Don't eat meat when you're stressed out, for God's sakes. You can't make enough stomach acid. It's imperative to get that because... I saw this little diagram years ago and it was stress in the middle and then arrows, like 25 arrows going to every part of the body. And I was all, oh. And now I can see how that really is important, how we manage our stress. Because we can't get away from stress, right? You take a deep breath, this out. That's how you manage your stress right there. And it costs you zero dollars. You heard it here at Health Alchemy for only $9.99. <laughs> <laughs> that's on tape oh god okay let's see stomach acid oh there's the chooser wrong food choices uh grazing all day you'll be constipated you guys can actually answer this one if you're grazing on food all day like eating every half hour hour why would you constipate versus having three meals a day separated by four or five hours i've seen this time and time again Yes. Never rest. Never rest. Probably the bio needs the rest to come out to add by gassing it. You, those are great. Okay. So she said the bile and the bowels need to rest. It's like if you run, you can't keep running at top speed, you're going to get tired, right? So peristalsis, you know, this action down the intestine takes energy. Your body invests energy to digest food to get energy and resources back. So if you don't have more energy after you're done eating, you don't have a good return on your investment. And in high finance, we talk about ROI. I want a good return on my investment. If you don't have more energy after you ate, the meal didn't work. I don't care what dogma or your system you're part of. And usually we overeat and we have low energy and wonder why. Well, because we're overeating because all our energy is going into digestion. And I used to be tired after every meal for most of the first 40 years of my life. Literally, it's like I thought it was the way it was. That was normal. It's, it's a normal amount of gas. And there's a normal amount of tiredness, we used to say. Not true. I have no gas. I'm never tired anymore. And my clients say the same thing. So it's imperative to understand that, you know, wrong food choices will cause constipation because your body needs that break in the peristalsis. There's a bolus of food moving along. You need all those muscles behind it to push it. You have a little tiny break and then more food, a little tiny break and more food. There's no muscular force pushing it. It just sits there. Now, I'm a chronic overeater. That's how I stepped my emotions as a young man. So I know very well what this is about. Like on Super Bowl Sunday or football Sunday, I sit there for five or six hours just crunching away. <laughs> Oatmeal cookies. 
box of cereal, uh, raisins, you know, you name it. It was like 10 pounds of fruit. And I justified it in the name of, I'll exercise it off later. Just like everybody else. And it doesn't exercise off, folks. Not all of it. All right, I was going to spend the last few minutes, let's go through the questions, it looks like. Mechanical bowel issues. So swollen organs is also worth mentioning. A lot of us have these organs. Uh, oh, that's right. Stop screen share for a second. A lot of us have these organs in here that are swollen. And so you got this, you got this liver over here, and it gets crowded. And you got this spleen over here, and that gets crowded. And you got this stomach right here, and that can get crowded. Or that actually crowds stuff around. Then you got your diaphragm here, and all your breathing stuff up here. And then you got all this bottom of the dog pile here, you know, and everything's prolapsing onto it. So if you overeat, I mean, the pregnant woman really knows this. You know, you got that thing in your belly that's crowding everything else. Do you want to eat a big meal? For God's sakes, no. Right? For God's sakes, no. So um, there actually was a guru in India. He was an overeater. And they say that he died because his stomach exploded in so much gas. Yeah, that was a documented story of this guru in India. Um, I thought he was kind of enlightened, but, you know. I got my food issues. <laughs> my friends actually used to call me the gaseous entity yeah. when I was a young man. I always had gas. Oh, it was so, so fun. Okay, I think that we're done. I, mean, I could go on and on, but I better just stop and go to the questions now. Um, we have a whole chat box, don't we? Let's see. Hopefully there's no uh, spam in here. Laugh out loud. Okay, Dean asked about pink Himalayan salt. So um, being a salt snob most of my life, I'll, I'll tell you, the old certified pink Himalayan that is mentioned in Peter Ferreira's book called Water and Salt, that's called Water and Salt by Peter Ferreira. It was written in the 90s. Um, there's a certified Himalayan that had a certain checkpoint of a contaminant assay, you know, heavy metals. And the new, uh, so I don't recommend pink salts anymore because they're not Himalayan anymore. They're coming out of Poland and Ukraine and Siberia, and they're full of contaminants. And the main two are Costco and Trader Joe's. Those are not a health food store, folks. Trader Joe's is a mercantile store. Costco is a big freaking corporation. You think they care about your health? No, they don't. They care about money. And they're going to cut corners at your expense. So don't get it. The, the real salt, it's decent, but it's 98% sodium chloride. So I don't use real salt. Celtic sea salt, Selena naturally. And if you can't find it, you can always reach out to me and I'll, I, I just put a link on my website probably. I'd probably have the key product page, you know, and just click there. Um, there's a certain, um, there's a brand of Celtic, it's Celtic sea salt and there's a few knockoffs. You gotta be careful, just show me what you got. Thanks Dean, great question. So salts are really imperative because in the fasting world, the intermittent fasting and whatnot, um, one of my favorite dudes that's so obnoxious, but the, uh, what's that guy? The snake juice diet. You know that guy, the snake juice diet. Oh, he's so obnoxious. There's an F word every sentence. He's so obnoxious, but he has a huge following. And he does these intermittent fasting things for 36, 48 hours, and he has you drinking his snake juice. And it's basically salt, potassium, magnesium, and baking soda while you're fasting to keep your metabolism from going haywire acidic. And um, generally I'm supportive of that. I make my own through what's called the root cause protocol and Morley Robbins. Um, there's an adrenal cocktail and you add lemon juice to that drink and you're doing quite well, you can fast on it because the, the adrenals really need that sodium and vitamin C, not ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid is not vitamin C, it's part of it. So don't delude yourself that ascorbic acid is vitamin C. You won't cure scurvy with it, it never could. Chia seeds, flax seeds too. Can, how much can you consume each day? Linda B. Um, my upper limit for chia seeds is somewhere between three and five tablespoons per day. If I do more than that, I get an incredible headache, nausea thing. And it's really what it is, is my, my gut is so upset. There's so much bacterial excrement that um, it's affecting my vagus nerve and it's affecting my brain. I call it a gut brain headache. It's very common. I've seen it when I overdo pro prebiotics, especially chia. Because I'll take a big bag of chia with me when I'm traveling, and it's so easy because you can add water to it and just drink that down, and there's your meal. It's the, absolutely the easiest travel food on the planet. It's a complete protein. It's got omegas in it. But I would overdo it some days. And um, Noel, you know, for the circle, we were on a vacation once, and that's what happened. 
So we just driving and driving and didn't want to stop. You know, I never, I don't eat fast food. I won't stop. I'll just fast. You know, it's not an option for me to do lesser than what I'm doing. And so chia seeds, chia seeds. And then, so it's kind of varied by person. Um, good question, Linda. Um, and let's see, was that prebiotics or probiotics that give the reaction? That's a good question. Um, either can give reactions. Um, but if you take prebiotics, which is like, so you have this sort of matrix of bugs living inside you and you take the prebiotics, you're going to feed whatever's living in there. So it's a good, easy, quick check, you know, like, okay, I'm going to eat a bunch of prebiotics. Um, Standard Process, the company I tend, to, I tend to use, they have a product called GI Stability. And it's got chicory root sugars and all that. And uh, me and Noel both tried it. We both got a little bit upset stomach. So I know that my, our guts are a little off. Um, John Hutchins asks, I take wheatgrass powder on a daily basis. Any qualms with that? The only qualm I have with wheatgrass uh, in general is if you're going into surgery and you're on some blood thinner thing, it tends to thin the blood. So, you know, outside of that, I, I do fresh wheatgrass almost daily and highly recommended. Um, fresh is going to be better, of course, but if all you get dried, then, you know, you do your best. Oh, yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, Standard Process has a product called SP Green Food, and it's barley grass, buckwheat leaf juice, kale, alfalfa juice, and Brussels sprouts. I have to whisper in my backyard, take all the grass grown naturally without yeah. anything. And Big fan of that. Pick all the weeds and put it in the blender and strained it, and it tasted great. My body liked it. So Monica said, you know, just, just the, the grasses that grow wild, you know, around our area, if they're not sprayed, generally I was told if you're getting wild grasses, you want to get them before they make their first node. Once they make their node, they're in silica production. Those, those nodes are full of silica and you're, you're in a different nutritional thing. Then. So wheatgrass too, wheatgrass will get that first node and then it's not wheatgrass anymore. It's now the wheat plant. So... I don't know how nutritionally how much it changes though. I haven't looked into that, Monica, but that's a great question. Great uh, comment. Okay, Dean asked protein. There you go. So Dean, the protein rich saturated fat, and what was the last one? Cholesterol rich lymphatic. Um, I have everybody muted because it's just chaos if I don't have you guys muted. Um, you nailed all of them, Dean. It's protein saturated fat and uh, cholesterol for radiation rich environments. Then your bioflavonoid portion of the C complex is the other element for radiation. Specifically, your dark berries, your proanthocyanidins, your resveratrols and whatnot, but they're all in the flavanol category. And the interesting thing about flavanols and flavonoids is that plants make them because plants don't give a crap about humans. So I, I lecture people about caffeine. Plants don't make caffeine for human pleasure. They make caffeine because it's a poison, it's an insecticide. They don't want to die. And so the plants make flavanols to adapt to their environment. Vitamin C is a form of sugar. Let me repeat that. Vitamin C is a form of sugar. Glucose and vitamin C ascorbic acid version are only one enzymatic step removed from each other. So I kind of have a problem with these ascorbic acid injections that you give people and they have cancer. Because cancer loves sugar. And you have this molecule that's very closely related to sugar. Personally, I haven't seen a whole lot of results with injected ascorbic acid for cancer patients. We did see it with COVID, however. There are a lot of doctors who are getting great results with very high thousands of milligram doses of ascorbic acid intravenously and whatnot. So if you're getting results, I don't care how you're getting them. That's great. I just normally don't use a lot of ascorbic acid because it causes DNA damage, and I have NIH studies to prove that. So long-term ascorbic acid over 500 milligrams should not be a long-term uh, issue. What about dumping the pancreas? Uh, let's see. Heidi, if you can type a little more in the box uh, about what you mean by dumping the pancreas. What about dumping the pancreas? Because I'm going to leave everybody muted. Um, and then I'll go to Dean's question while you type that in, Heidi. Hawaiian black sea salt, what about the lectins and wheatgrass? Great question. Um, I haven't studied the lectins and wheatgrass specifically, uh, Dean, but will you email me what you got on that? I'd like to see what you got. I haven't. Monica, have you heard about lectins and wheatgrass juice? Nope. Yeah, you, you got something for us, Dean. Let's yeah. contribute, please. Hawaiian black sea salt. So there's a company um, 
that does a, uh, a jade bamboo sea salt. Okay, for diabetes, thank you. Jade bamboo sea salt. They have a black one and they have a red one. And um, oh, yeah, they, they come in a tiny little six ounce uh, package. And they, they're good company too. Yeah. But I like their, they have this one, they, they add bamboo juice to the ocean water, then they dehydrate it. And it's this nice green bamboo sea salt. At the time, uh, my, my colleague Michael McAvoy recommended it to me because I was having heart palpitations from turn out excessive caffeine. Um, and laugh out loud. And he said, just try some of this bamboo salt in some water. First dose, palpitations went away, never came back. Very impressed. Bamboo juice. Okay, so Heidi's question is the last question. Heidi asked about um, the pancreas for diabetes. So the pancreas is kind of more of a key organ than we originally um, realized, I think. It's also an endocrine organ. It produces digestive secretions and it produces um, glucagon and insulin. There might be other sub-hormones that we don't know about that it produces too. It's these tiny little hormones that only move from cell to cell. It's really interesting. These tiny, tiny little micro-hormones. And we, we haven't really spent a lot of time on them as a species, but we probably will soon, if not. Um, dumping the pancreas. So um, I think you mean helping the pancreas, right? Heidi? For diabetes? I'm going to leave everybody muted. I'm sorry, but it just helps me because I'll digress. So for me... Um, if you have type 2 diabetes, there's type 2 and type 1. Type 2 diabetes is under your control to fix. And if you want to fix it quickly, eat raw food only for a month, including raw meat and raw dairy. You can cleanse eating raw meat, but you can't cleanse eating cooked meat in small amounts. So I have some tuna sushi roll over here. Actually, oh, I have white rice. That's not cleanse worthy, but oh well. Shh, you didn't hear me say that. So raw foods one, and then um, if you have elevated blood sugar and cravings, the best herb, I'm gonna type it in the chat box. This is the name of the herb, is Gymnema. Gymnema sylvestre. Gymnema we use a lot because it's proven to lower blood sugar and it's proven to support the pancreas. There is some evidence that it can help regenerate the pancreas, taken long term. I've seen a little bit of that because I have some type one diabetics using gymnema to keep their blood sugar down. I have this one, a type one diabetic young man. Um, he was partying and drinking too much alcohol, type one diabetes, and his blood sugar went to 1000. He was in a coma in the hospital and they put him on opioids, which made it worse and he was constipated for a month afterwards. I mean, these doctors are just moronic. Like the guy got a blood sugar of a thousand, you're giving him opioids? Like, are you nuts? He's already dehydrated, you know? It's the sugar sucking all the hydration out of his cells. Oh. But we got them normalized with gymnema, that's part of it. And then with standard process, I'm gonna type in um, another product that I recommend. It's called pancreatrophin PMG from standard process. This one also will help regenerate some of the pancreas. Standard process incorporated, which I now sell on my website. <laughs> Online, oh boy. Pancreatrophin PMG standard process incorporated. So, um, Gymnema is the one, and then pancreatrophin. There's other herbs you can do to help your blood sugar, but um, generally raw foods are helpful. And then getting an app on your phone to monitor your carbohydrate intake. This is my favorite app, Chronometer. Chronometer is the, my favorite app. So anybody on this call, check your, uh, oh, sorry, Linda, I don't say, it's up. Um, it's, it's local to your computer, Linda, because it's, you know, it's up. Um, so you can get the notes later, I guess, but chronometer is the app. And um, chronometer, um, well, that sucks, you guys. I don't, there's nothing else I can do on my side. Absolutely nothing. Because <laughs> some people can see it and some can't. Yeah, everyone view publicly and privately. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, there'll be notes for this. Um, so you guys will be able to get the notes. Um, and the record, this will be recorded too. Um, that sucks. Chronometer is the app for your phone. So my challenge to all of you is to input one really good day of diet in your chronometer. You know, just as an example, one really bad day and one average day. And if your carbohydrates are over 250 grams, you're too high. 
unless you're doing hefty workouts. And then the glycogen loading kind of applies to the carbohydrate type, not the protein type. We didn't even go into that in foundation when we have to type people. Because some people need fat for energy and some people need carbs for energy. I'm way over on the fat side. That's why my life made sense. I stopped getting sick a lot when I dropped the carbs and went to fat for energy. So butter and cream are my two calorie, main calorie sources. Literally, butter and cream. Um, if I was in Greece, it'd be olive oil, you know, but I like butter, so. Um, and then your protein should be about 70% of your body weight in grams. Generally, 100 grams is safe, and your fat should be at least 70 grams and maybe below 200, somewhere in that range. It varies depending on your metabolic type. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this up now because it's 9 o'clock, and I'm just going to close off with um, if you have the right food choices, then you're unburdening your immune system, and COVID won't be a problem for you. If you're digesting food and breaking it down, this is the end part that I didn't say earlier about enzyme therapy. Back in the 50s and the 40s, there were some therapists, nutritional therapists, looking at what they called digestive leukocytosis, which is a condition of elevated white blood cells after meals. And they started to study different types of meals and what would cause this. And Edward Howell was his name. He wrote a book called Enzyme Nutrition. Edward Howell, H-O-W-E-L-L. -L. Wrote a book called Enzyme Nutrition. And then what they determined was that if you don't eat at least 51% raw and unrefined foods in your diet, then you will have an elevated white blood cell response after you eat. And most Americans are in that category. They're eating too much cooked food, too many refined foods. They've got an elevated white blood cell count after every meal, three meals a day, you know, 80 years of life. And you wonder why you have autoimmunity. That is the origin of autoimmunity right there. And they knew it in the 50s. And we didn't learn our lesson. Why? Because of the propaganda stream. This guy's work was not published, you know? It was not shared. But fortunately, there's enough people around like myself that remember this stuff and practice it. So you have to have a certain amount of raw in your diet. If you don't, you're gonna have an elevated white blood cell count and you're gonna have elevated immune problems later. Because like I said, if you're running, if your immune system's running all day, every day, it's gonna get exhausted at some point. And you know it's exhausted when your, your lab work shows low, white blood cell and red blood cell count. If you see low white blood cell and red blood cell count, you know your bone marrow is exhausted. And that means you gotta do some serious work. So that's why you need to digest well. I, didn't get, I was getting into that earlier and I wanted to seal it up with that enzyme therapy. And you gotta detox and decongest. If you can't detox and decongest, that's what bad bugs love is congestion. If you have a stream with moving water, it doesn't stink. If water sitting in a pond, it's going to start stinking at some point. Stagnation equals bad immunity, which is congestion. And then drainage, the fourth foundation, it fits right in with that, right? You got to drain your poop, drain your pee. Breathe, for God's sakes, breathe, folks. <gasps> you know, for God's sakes, breathe. And, no and for God's sakes, don't wear a mask. <laughs> I'm in jest. At least be aware of how the mask is affecting your breathing. I had one on, you know, today in the stores and it's awful, but I'm, I'm just tired of fighting it. So you have to understand that um, a lot of what you're seeing out there in the mainstream media is um, it's propaganda. And the studies they're citing are, are really lies and paid off bullshit. And my, my take with all credible studies is you ask the question, who paid for that study and what's their agenda? First two questions you got to ask on any study. Who did it and what's their agenda? And you can see the agenda right before your very eyes. It's called money and power and control. Am I charging anybody a dime for this? No. Because I'm here as a giveaway. That's what we want from our government. Giveaway. They're all making money right now. Everybody's out of work. Not good for immunity. <laughs> so, folks, I'm going to say uh, goodbye. And uh, thank you. Monica's reminding me. So there'll be a follow-up email. Anybody that wants, um, I'll be sending an email out to the cleanse group almost you know, every, every day, every other day, every third day. So if you want to get in that stream, just contact your people, Anna or Monica. And if you're watching this recording, then the cleanse starts next Friday, the official three-week, 21-day cleanse. There's going to be um, a weekly prep group on Wednesday, Thursday nights. 
And there will be a weekend community dinner just about every Friday this month. I just decided to open it up. And there will be some recorded talks, not this long, but, you know, some, the Zoom room will be open for anybody that wants to be a part of the group. And the clan costs $2.99. And there's other shorter cleanses of three-day, seven-day, 10-day, and 14-day variations. And I'm not really pulling the should anybody into anything. Um, but I'm going to do some raw food stuff and some fasting this month. And um, if anybody wants to join, then I'll do my best to post it at least a few days ahead of time. Oh. So the website is up, and that'll be in the chat box. Uh, you can go to www.healthalchemy.com. And I can't thank Monica enough, because I never think of this stuff. <laughs> never do. Oh, and um, there's the website. And then if you want herbs to even shift to you, I have, uh, let's see, the battery's still working. I will walk you all over. I have gallons and gallons of herbs from my garden here. Tinctures, they're apple cider vinegar based. They're all along here. So I normally charge $7 an ounce for herbs, but this is my giveaway because COVID, the plants went really, they grew really fast this year and I have more than I can deal with. So um, generally I do what's called a free 15 minute consult. And I also do 15 minute quick checks for 25 bucks. And it's a good way to say, hey, Craig, I want to do the cleanse, but I don't have a lot of money. Can you tell me what I need to take and send me uh, something for cheap and work it out? So we'll have a circle up um, for the prep group on Wednesday nights. And I'll just have the Zoom room open. It won't be recorded. And that'll be more in the kitchen over there. Oh, where's the kitchen? Over <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, I'm still recording all this. God darn it. That's okay. We need to know that, that 